Well, welcome everybody. Uh, thanks so much for coming. We'll spend a little bit of time just getting everybody to pop in and populate. But as you come in, feel free to say hello in the chat bar. In Zoom, the chat bar is usually at the bottom. So if you can hit that chat bar, uh, make sure it's set to all panelists and attendees and give us a big old hello. Let us know your name, where you're from. Let us know what brought you to the webinar tonight or what would be success for you in roughly 45 minutes to an hour. Um, the panelists, I think, will do the same and uh, myself as well. My name is Javin Kirby Bernakovich. I own and operate All Points Design. That's allpointsdesign.ca. And today I'm joined by my co-host and my collaborator with the Regenerative Business Mentorship Program, Rob Avis of adaptivehabitat.ca, as well as vergepermaculture.ca, uh, and new author of the Essentials for Rainwater Harvesting, which is coming out quite soon. So definitely take a moment and just uh, throw out a uh, hello, uh, let us know where you're from and uh, what's bringing you in today. Be great to hear from everybody. Yeah, welcome guys. Really looking forward to uh, to chatting with all these incredible businesses and uh, hope you guys are ready for a great webinar. So uh, we've got, uh, let's see here, Graham Teeple. Hey Graham, how's it going? Jack Goodwin, Kellen McClay, McKay. Hey Kellen, how you doing? Mark, uh, I'm not sure how to pronounce your last name, Zocher or Zoker? Uh, and Tim Wickstrom, nice to have you, Tim. Great you can make it. Awesome. Well, thanks everybody for coming in. And if there's new folks that are coming, feel free to throw in a hello over on the side. It'd be great to hear from you. Today, we're going to be talking with three really unique businesses and three absolutely incredible uh, business entrepreneurs, designers, installers, and generally positive, stellar human beings whom <laughs> Rob and I both had the pleasure of working with over two offerings of the Regenerative Business Mentorship Program Level 1. Now, the business program that Rob and I put together was based upon principles. It's a principles-based approach. And in that, if you understand the principles, which we've already given out to the world through podcasts with Diego Footer and his podcast, Creative Destruction, once you understand the principles and work with the principles, you can basically apply them in any way, shape, or form specific to your site, to your business, to the number of people in your business. And as I was just talking with John and Rachel a little bit before the call, they both said, yeah, it's going to take another year to augment and to put them into place even more so because as we start working with principles, it sinks in deeper and deeper and deeper. That's the great thing about these little lines of truth is that when we really understand them and, and, and play with them, we understand how they can affect our business and how we can, they can affect our, our mindset. So today we'll be talking with all three. We'll be running through four questions. Uh, if you do end up having a question for a business, we're gonna have a small amount of time at the end of the program to uh, ask maybe one or two questions. So if you have a question for Josh or for John or for Rachel or for Rob and myself, we're happy to see those. Feel free to put them into the Q&A box on the Zoom webinar. And if you're on YouTube Live, feel free to throw them in and I'm sure Rob will catch them. But uh, I think first and foremost, I think what I'll do is I'll get our three panelists to introduce themselves, where they're from, uh, what their businesses are about, and uh, finally, where their business is and where they were uh, a year or a year and a half ago before they decided to jump on to the program. So I think, uh, Rachel, I said your name first, so we'll go with you if that's all right. Hi, I am Rachel. I am in Napa, California, and I'm running a, a one-acre farm, CSA farm, um, that just started this past year, and also have a garden, edible garden design um, and farm management consulting, consulting business. And a year ago, I was just recently moved from Sonoma to Napa, so that's about like 45 minutes drive um, and I was still spending most of my time working as a farm manager at a farm in Glen Ellen uh, 45 minutes away that was owned owned by other people and had occasional side work doing design or consulting work and it probably I'm trying can't quite remember but I think it had been a while since I'd done any design or consulting work at that point.
Awesome. And what brought you to the program? Uh, actually, uh, a, a friend, Kellen McKay, who's, who's on tonight, had, had told me about it. That, and, when I, and when I read about it, it sounded like it was just uh, perfect for me. Um, I'd been wanting to really be fully self-employed and always had trouble uh, working for other people. And um, it just seemed like it covered a lot of what I would need to make that, that shift. Great. Great. Thanks, Kellen. John, would you mind introducing yourself? And I'm the owner operator of Our Land Organics. Um, we're an ecological landscape design build company uh, based out of the Cincinnati, Ohio area, uh, Northern Kentucky area. And um, we do consultancy, um, you know, design, and then also the installation portion of the project. So where I was a year ago, um, and what really attracted me to this was, um, you know, I've been in business for a few years, but I was still feeling a bit isolated in terms of a community and having, you know, a language to really get across what, what I'm doing and the actual value of the work that I'm doing. It was still kind of uh, developing that and just, you know, listening to Rob and Javin, you know, walk through the principles, it really resonated with me. And it really has given me a language to work with clients and really um, kind of convey what I do and how it can help them out. So um, going through uh, the program really helped develop that and I'm continuing to develop that right now. Awesome, John. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Josh, would you mind introducing yourself and your business? Okay, so my name is Josh. Can everyone hear me here? Yeah, right on. Okay, so my name is Josh and I'm one of three owners of Edible Landscapes Design and we operate here out of Victoria, BC in Canada. And about a year ago, uh, the three of us, uh, my two business partners and I, we'd been running our business for I believe four years last year and we've been having success and we've been working with you know, good clients and we'd had some successes and we'd had some bumpy points. And I would say that one of the challenges that we were really struggling with was between three business partners and, and really having a common, common language as was just alluded to common language, uh, a, a strategy that we could unify behind and, and really something to help us take our business to the next level because we had been sort of chugging along and things had been pretty consistent for the last couple of years. But we also had this sense that if we didn't come up with a real strategy that we could all rally behind, that if we started having growth as we were expecting, that it could actually be a, a really challenging thing because we were finding that keeping people happy was a challenge. Um, completing the jobs, but still keeping the pipeline full was a challenge. So there's a lot of moving parts and we were just starting to get a taste of the reality of really what it takes to handle a business beyond just having passion for it. We, we really needed some real strategies to move forward. So that's what brought us, brought us here. Thanks, Josh. Appreciate that. It's always fascinating to hear what brings people to a program or to an offering or to a book for that matter, because it helps people understand what might be their own issues or problems and how they might relate. Um, next question for the three of you, and actually, John, you brought up a, a good point, is that uh, upon reading some of the, the copy, you kind of felt like this might be a program for you. So um, at least on Zoom, I'll throw up the URL if folks want to take a look at some of the ad copy and, and read some of that. And Rob, if you can put that on to, to YouTube as well, that'd be great. Um, the next question for our panelists is, you know, what was your experience of the regenerative business mentorship program and, and what were some of your main takeaways? And I think we'll go back to you, John, and we'll just keep going back and cross the, the three Brady bunch I see on top of my screen. The experience was great. Um, as I kind of mentioned, a little bit of my own silo down here um, as far as other ecological landscape design build companies. Um, so meeting weekly with these people who are all kind of enthusiastic, but also, you know, putting the, the rubber to the road and actually doing, doing the work as well. And then, you know, being able to check in with both uh, you and Rob uh, was huge. Um, so that, that really was a huge momentum builder. And then 
you know, coming in with questions every week, like, hey, I've got this consultation, you know, now it's going to go into the design process, but here's some questions I got was a huge uh, a step for me to kind of listen to how you would kind of dissect the problem and then apply the principles to it. So kind of going through that, you know, week after week during the fall last year was huge. Um, and then kind of going into takeaways, um, I've got a lot, um, but a few that kind of stuck out to me was um, really understanding um, to take your time. Uh, one of the principles is, you know, we, we do not subsidize and uh, kind of really not just grasping for any work that just can come. Um, and that, that is tough to do when you're starting out. And, you know, I've been at this now for a few years, so I'd kind of gotten past that initial hump. But then there's this kind of gray area where you start to kind of feel for, get a feel for the jobs that you do want, but then also... Uh, you have to kind of deflect jobs that may not be the best fit and kind of coming up with a language on how to work with that and developing a good fit call uh, with something that we did during the class and just kind of going back to that language of, of understanding and having that consistency every time you interact with clients um, really is a momentum builder. Um, I can't underst understate that um, in terms of what was really helpful um, as I developed uh, along with the class there. So those are a few. Um, I'd be happy to touch on some more, but I'm gonna let, let some of the others talk here a little bit. Thanks so much, John. You, you brought up that wonderful word that I think all of us in the program know by heart now, good fit. And for folks that are watching this and may not know when John says a good fit call, uh, a good fit call is, is a sales call, but it's, it's not a sales call, it's a good fit call. It's when somebody calls and is interested in our business, we speak with them and they really, the, the only thing we're trying to figure out is, is this person a good fit for us and are we a good fit for them? And uh, as John has spoken, it's pretty exponential once you start to play that way. So John, thanks very much for bringing that up and we'll put it into a little vocabulary book on the side someplace at some point. We won't do that at all. <laughs> we're not that technologically advanced, but I'd like to be that technologically advanced. Um, thanks a lot, John. Uh, Rachel, what, uh, what was your experience of uh, the program and, and maybe a takeaway or two? Also a great experience. Um, I, yeah, there, there was just the, the weekly podcasts and then really like re-listening to them multiple times um, as well as I, I would re-listen to the, the question and answer sessions and get a lot from um, from have, giving time to, to let the information sink in. And then the, the um, being assigned the partner that we had weekly calls was like very valuable as well. Um, so the, the takeaways, I feel like I, I did not get a chance with this, me being in, in my peak busy season right now to, to go back and, and look over the PDF. And I, it was just like what, what came to mind. And I feel like there's been many things from the mentorship that have, that have like continued to like come into my mind, maybe on a daily basis, a weekly basis, but, but one of them is about how can I make this easy? So in, in planning my CSA farm, uh, you know, wh which days am I gonna do the hard, which days am I gonna let people pick up shares? How am I gonna, how am I gonna make this easy for, for me that I can still take a weekend off, for example? Um, and then the, the, the client process, there's just been a lot of them, the client process and setting up um, setting up my website and setting up a way for people to, to sign up for the CSA and uh, pay me and have like only a few payments and making that an easy process for me and for them, um, I think has been like hugely successful. Um, and then the piece about the, my thinking is my high, highest value offering in, in the consulting work really has, has um, is something that I keep coming back to and still like accepting um just finding finding what, what feels comfortable and charging people for thinking about their problems and really continuing to like let that soak in um that if if, if i'm going to be thinking about someone else's problems that there's a cost to that um let's see yeah i think 
I think those are the ones that have like kind of come through my, my mind the most frequently over, over the past year. Um, and, and I would be interested to kind of like go through the material again and see what continues to sink in going into this next year. And certainly as I evaluate this year, as I kind of get through the season and, and can really look at the numbers for this year. Um, and I think it's going to be a continuing process of like building prof prof profitability, especially into the farm, because that's not, it's really something you look at as a whole year. Um, and, and, and of course, the, the CSA is a salad lover CSA. So that was like, initial, like I focused on high value crops in, in my farming. And that was also something that really came from the, the, the RBM program. Mm. Those are great points. I, I, I liked you bringing in, how can this be easy? I know that's, that was a game changer for me years ago when I was thinking about my schedule and how I could bring people in. And I was always thinking about them. And then it completely switched when I said, how can this be easy for me? And all of a sudden, it changes the entire conversation. Uh, it makes it really, uh, uh, re really able to think about if I'm at my, my peak, I can be at my peak for my clients and my clients get a better value out of me. And if I'm not, if I'm taking phone calls at times when it doesn't work for me or, and I'm, or if I'm taking prefrontal cortex time, time when I've got lots of big decisions to make at a time which doesn't work for me, I'm also not serving my clients. So I really appreciate you saying that, Rachel. That's, that's a brilliant piece. Um, Josh, a uh, couple of uh, takeaways in your experience of the program. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my experience of the program, um, you know, as I mentioned, there's a couple other business partners who took this program together. And I know that it was something that we, we all really looked forward to. And, and for people who are working together on a team, especially, um, you know, if, if the team is, is a part of the decision making process and the planning process, you know, having something to rally behind and come together and look forward to uh, just can't be understated. I know in the past, uh, you know, the actual, the taking time to, to strategically plan about business development always took a back seat to, you know, business operations. But having, having not only this time and then the resources to learn leading up to the, leading up to the program, and then being able to actually ask very, very specific questions from people who, you know, frankly have very similar businesses or elements of, of businesses that are similar, you know, in edible landscaping and design businesses, consultation businesses. So being able to ask people who, you know, we, who have much more experience than we do in the business world and in specifically in this field, being able to ask, you know, Rob and Javin, very, very explicit questions and very detailed questions. And then to have them ruminate over those questions and come up with detailed answers and really spend the time on our specific problem. Um, you know, I, I scratch my head to imagine a better investment that I've, I've made. And I, I, I can't off the top of my head think of one. So, you know, can't really overstate just how powerful it was for us. And and beyond just ourselves, it was the shared journey with the other people in the group because, you know, we had an advantage that there was three people coming to each meeting. So the three of us, we could come together and come up with some pretty darn good questions. But there was also, you know, eight other people in the class who came up with really good questions as well that we hadn't even considered. So being a part of that journey and, and being able to learn from collectively in this mastermind group is, is something I really look forward to again in the future. And like I said, I just cannot overstate the value of that. And, you know, as, as far as takeaways, uh, wow. Probably the biggest one for myself was relates to the sales process and the idea of not pitching, you know, it's, we're not pitching, we're, you know, we're, we're having a good fit call, you know, this actually has to work for both of us and it's not, you know, it's, it completely removed this sense of, of needing to posture and really looking much deeper internally and, and really asking ourselves, asking myself, you know, is this a good fit? Is this actually a good fit? Is this someone who I'm actually going to get along with? Maybe the money is right, but ah, there's just something, I just have a feeling I'm not going to get along with this person. Well, you know what? No money is worth a bad fit. It really is not. And I've learned that the hard, the hard way, even since this, this program. So it's, uh, these lessons keep coming back over and over again. And, you know, fortunately, 
you know, we, we have those resources with us still, whether it's the podcast or the, um, you know, the, the Q and a sessions, but also the infographics, you know, just before I came to this call here, I, I just took a quick flip through the infographics that we had and boom, it just immediately put me back into that learning experience and, and that whole well of experience and knowledge just comes flooding back to me. So, you know, it's something that is still very much alive and is still very much a work in progress. Josh, thank you so much. It's, it's a lovely reminder that, you know, fit over finance uh, ensures there's no frustration as long as we are willing to say, ah, I'm, I'm loving working with you. You're loving working with me. Fantastic. It's probably going to go well. But if, if the money becomes a little bit bigger, then we end up taking that up in frustration. So I, I really appreciate that point. That's a, that's a point that uh, I know for me that I can I can always hear multiple times and still get value out of it, even when it comes back through the program and, uh, and from you. So I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Folks, the next question I'm going to ask you is uh, from the program to where you are now, what are some of the tangible benefits that you've seen? Um, where's your business now? In, or, or are there new businesses, new offerings, new services, uh, increased number of, of clients, projects, increased number of, uh, value you charge because you you understand your value better but in terms of, of tangible benefits what's what's changed for you and um, I think seeing as we uh, first started with uh, with John maybe we'll go back to Rachel okay so a lot has changed in the last year um, the so the, the, the job that I had mentioned a, a year ago that I was spending most of my time working as um, farm manager uh, at this, this business in Napa, I, I um, shifted that position to, to become a monthly contract position where I was only spending a couple of days there a month, or a couple of days a week there. Um, and rather than getting paid an hourly wage, had a monthly contract and, and responsibilities. So that was like a, a huge shift that was di directly related to, I think, a, a question and answer question that I posed. Um, but really felt a lot better to be um, able to control my time that way and, and not be uh, working by the hour, but working by the task with, with that work. Um, and, and now that is, is in the in the process of transitioning uh, really to a full-on cons consulting job and no more like hands-on farm, farm work there. Um, and in my design work, I was able to drum up a, a, a few, several, I guess a few design jobs through the winter and um, begin to have a client process, which was, which was a big one as well, that I really didn't have a client process. I didn't, um, so now I'm still, working on that it still feels like an, an area of growth but I, I have a process <laughs> i don't think i'm fully comfortable in it um and and then since the spring i've really been focused on on the farm and i think there's going to be this pattern where during like the late late fall through early spring i can focus on on hopefully design work and edible garden design and in the mid spring through mid fall I'll be more focused on on my work growing vegetables and maybe flowers, growing high value crops. Um, and so it's, it's, uh, it was about eight years ago that I tried to start a farm on an acre of leased land. And it's comparing my experience this year to my experience eight years ago. And I feel like it, it, it's, it's a, just um, the quality of the product I've been able to grow, the uh, clients I've been able to, to, and demand for my product that I've been able to grow and just really I think really June, about four months that I've actually even had any product to sell is pretty amazing. And I'm, I'm really excited for what I can do in, in the next year. And so I have a new business name, a new website, um, a lot of, a lot of new things th this year. And I think again, it's going into next year, there's just going to be so much more opportunity to, to apply the principles and continue to grow. Mm -hmm. Thanks so much, Rachel. Uh, I, I love hearing about the, the business growing. And, and again, I think your, your niching of salad lovers CSA, you know, it's a wonderful thing to let people know. They know exactly what it's about and you know the value of it and being able to produce that is pretty incredible. Um, I'm a little disappointed I don't live closer so I can be one of your CSA members because I am a salad lover. <laughs> and uh, then I wouldn't have to 
to pick my neighbor's dandelions. But that's another story for another time. Uh, John, uh, how about yourself, sir? Post RBM. Um, I think one word to kind of sum up a lot of things is focus. Um, really learned to, <clears throat> excuse me, to focus on particularly marketing. Um, you know, throughout the class, I was learning, you know, more about the language of, of what my point of view, I guess, as a company. So that's something we talked about during the class. And that was a new concept for me exactly, like the point of view, like who you are, what you're all about, and then I kind of translate as into your company. And then that resonates with other people that also value who you are and what you're doing. So that was kind of a new thing for me at the time. I, I don't know why it seems simple now, but now uh, it's, it's something I've really been working on. And with that, it kind of uh, allows you then to be valued more by people and then you, you bring more value and then you also are charging for that as well. So that's, that's something that I'm developing in terms of how to understand um, how to charge for designs. I've been increasing my fee for that. And then also definitely I'm surfing the overwhelm factor of, of getting too much work and understanding how to um, you know, deal with that as well. So it, I'm at the point now where some companies, I guess, would, would start looking at scaling up, you know, becoming a bigger company, but that's not necessarily my interest right now. My interest right now is, you know, to continue to work on the, the marketing aspect and just become uh, developing a better and more thorough reputation in my community. But along with that, um, I'd really am fascinated with educating and starting other ecological landscape design build companies. So um, I would really like to help others that are interested in the field um, start because there's a huge demand. Um, in my metro region, there's a handful of us out there and it's, there's just not a lot of people that uh, even know that it's an option. So I'm also kind of looking into what ed education aspects are there and uh, you know, helping others as well start their business. So those are a couple things that are uh, definitely been informed from, from being in the class. Awesome, John. Awesome. Uh, it's always a nice problem to have. Too, too much business is a nice problem. It can still turn into pollution, but a nice problem to have within, within the subset. Uh, for everybody who's been joining us over the last little while, my name is Jab Brunakovich with allpointsdesign.ca, and I'm joined by my collaborator and co-host today, Rob Avis of adaptivehabitat.ca and vergepermaculture.ca. And today we're talking with three previous grads from the Regenerative Business Mentorship Program Level 1. Uh, folks who've gone through the program, who've had about a year since then, and we're just doing a check-in to see how, how they're doing, what they took away from the program, and, and what's next for them. So thanks again, everybody, for coming into uh, the webinar, if, either if you're on YouTube or on Zoom. If you're new, do please uh, throw out where you're from and uh, what you're hoping to get out of this. It'd be great to, to hear from you again. Uh, Josh. Uh, how about yourself, sir? What's What's been some of the tangible takeaways or the changes in the business you've seen or, or what's been some of the improvements and where's your business now? Hmm. So I would say that, uh, you know, one of the first principles, you know, we, we are profitable, we do not subsidize. That was a big wake up call because we realized that we had been subsidizing a lot of work. We'd been subsidizing all of our sales calls. We'd been subsidizing huge amounts of, uh, design work, huge amounts of management work. You know, we had this feeling that, I don't know, we needed to be price competitive and that meant having the lowest price and being more accessible to people. But it had also been coming to a point where we were running ourselves completely ragged. We weren't, we were working huge hours and not making enough money to really make it regenerative for ourselves. So Having that realization of what our, you know, that our thinking, as mentioned also before by, by Rachel, that our thinking is our, is one of our highest value offerings, if not our highest value offering, you know, it's actually okay to charge for the time that I'm sitting and thinking about someone's problem. So that was a big one. And, and with that, we realized that we needed to adjust our design prices. 
and we did adjust our design prices and you know they were quite a bit more you know two to three times um, and upwards uh, of the design rates we were charging in the past and we found you know at, at first I remember the first sales call of a sort of mustering the courage to say you know okay this is actually this is how much our design costs and thinking oh this there's no way these people are going to be able to afford this um, you know but remembering you know this is about a fit if if this is a fit for our client then great and if not great because there's someone else out there and you know when they didn't bat an eye and they said yeah okay yeah let's do this uh, that was a big wake-up call and what we found is that by being able to charge right for the services that we offer we're able to offer a way better product and you know people were were buzzing about it after you know people were we're far happier. The people who we've charged much more money to have been far happier than the people we've charged less money to. So that was a huge takeaway. Um, and then just the, the overall, the ease of which uh, taking like receiving new clients and working with new clients has been huge. You know, for myself, I, I used to get quite anxious about making a sales call, you know, a sales call. And, you know, one story that really comes to mind is uh, after we had written out our, you know, our sales process and practice it with each other, you know, at one point in time, I actually received a phone call it and I was laying in bed. It was, you know, about seven thirty or eight in the morning on a weekend. And, uh, and I saw a phone call coming in and I knew it was forwarded from our company, uh, our company answering network. And without question, I just, picked up the phone. I was literally still laying in bed and I just launched into this, into the system, the system that we created and the system did its work and the system landed us a job that we charged about five times more than we'd ever charged a design for. And, you know, to this day, those are maybe our best clients, our most appreciative clients. And, and it was easy that was the thing that was very shocking about it was that it was actually very, very easy. So, you know, realizing that there's a different way of moving forward with business and it doesn't have to be a real struggle. It can actually just be about finding the right people and making the right connections. I mean, that was huge. So, you know, there's the money aspect, but then there's also just the peace of mind behind the scenes. And, you know, I, I would say that I'm for the most part, way more easygoing than I was a year ago and uh, and feel like I've really got things nailed down in a way that I've never had before. Hey Josh, can I just interject there for a second? Yes, please. Yeah, so it's it's interesting because, um, and, and folks, if you haven't seen me up, up on the video yet, it's Rob Avis here with uh, Verge Permaculture, um, Javin's co-host here. So um, it's easy to hear a comment like, um, we just charged five times more than we'd ever charged and think that that's an extravagant price. But in reality, uh, what Javin and I see more often than not, and in fact, even Javin and I have come from this place, um, the, the real way of saying it is that we were charging five times too little. And, um, and so it's, it's an incredible, uh, and I, I, can, I really hear what you're saying there in terms of being able to show up at a job to be um, paid appropriately and um and be able to do incredible work um and and really that's what it's all about and part of it's a sales process and all these other principles that that you've already spoken about um and so um i just yeah give you guys a self a, a pat on the back for that that's an incredible uh, milestone and uh it's just, just so wonderful to hear mm. if i could thank you and if i could just add one thing to that there um you know as part of that, we, we did have a bit of a challenge with, with feeling like we had made our prices inaccessible to some people. And, you know, our mission is to really make sure that more people have more food to eat in the world. But one of the things that you guys really helped us with was, was creating a sales funnel, creating different la layers of offerings. So, you know, our premium service is, you know, our full scale design, but beneath that we have a bunch of other offerings that we can offer to people and ways of helping people as well. So I would say that our services are actually more accessible than they were in the past. So it's just something to take note of. Mm. Great point, Josh. Great point that we, when we, when we build our businesses, we, we don't necessarily have to just segment. We don't have to narrow in on one call it economic segment within the market. We can actually continue to offer a full spectrum of services and a full spectrum of products to folks of 
different levels depending if they want to take up some of the work. And I think that's something that you guys have done really well is you've got the, the almost pseudo DIY where you help people understand and process themselves. So it's those folks that are closer to the DIY conversation. They've got a little bit of understanding, a little bit of comprehension, and then all the way up to the, you know, we can hold your hand all the way up to the, we can put you in a cart and push you around at the same time and bring you to what you need. But it is, it's levels of guidance. And I think that's really a really important thing for people to realize, not even uh, in, in this program, but in your education in life, there's everything from you doing every single piece of the work, you scouring the internet, you finding every single piece of information you need and, and, and doing it all the way to having a bit of a guiding hand, all the way to having a group of people help you, plus an accountability partner, plus two people who've been there before and have made the mistakes and really want to do it with you, to then taking the next step for some people. And I know both Rob and I have worked with folks who want to do business coaching one-on-one. -on -one. And all the way along there, those are spectrums of interactions, just like there's spectrums of interaction for a design build company from, hey, we'll help you out with your ideas and what you're doing to we'll do everything and you don't have to worry about it. So Josh, thank you very much for bringing in that point. I think it's an important one for people to, to, to pick up. Um, so we're around the bend here. We only have got one more question for you folks. And if, if folks haven't seen it, there's uh, Indiana Jones, still one of my all time favorite movies when he's in that cave and he's, he's taking the golden idol and he's putting the sack of sand and he turns around and it's not the right weight and up comes the boulder and he runs away. I like to think of it this way, the, from RBM, what's, that, what's some of those golden statues that you're like, I can't believe I got this piece from here and I would love to give it to as many people as possible. Uh, and this is a great time to do it, to, to give that away to somebody else and hopefully just this webinar alone will help somebody get that little nugget, maybe big golden idol that they can apply to their business right now, today, tomorrow, within the next week and really do exceptional work because the point here isn't to hoard, isn't to keep tight, but to allow these principles to roam freely, to interact with people, to really help people catch, as Rob calls it, this incredible wave that's coming towards our industry. Every time we turn on the news, we find something else within the world, be it in the environment or the man-made environment, that begs for better design, for better interactions, for more food security, for more water security, for more uh, power and energy security, for all of these different pieces. And that's what folks like you, who might be listening to this, wanting to get into business within the regenerative landscape, the permaculture landscape, the design landscape, people like you can help with. Because when we think in this way, we're actually quite specific and quite special. We're able to bring somebody in and to diagnose them, to understand their problems, and then to recommend treatment. And that's the very cool thing is that this big wave that's coming, if you really know the technical pieces and get a sense of how it feels, and I think Josh talked about that, being able to pick up the phone first thing in the morning. Thanks, Josh, for not telling us what you were or weren't wearing. It's good. I appreciate that. Kept it PG. But being able to just kind of slip into that, just like when you're in a wave and you slip into surfing and go, yeah, okay, this is, I got this. This is easy. This is flow. That's what I think for me and Rob, we really wanted to do with this program. And from the feedback, sounds like we were, we were successful. And we want to keep doing is helping people hit the wave that's here and the bigger wave that's coming. So the last question here is that golden idol. Like what is, what is the one, two, three, four things that you're like, this is so amazing. And you want to tell people about it. What are some of those pieces? So John, uh, I, it's it's fair to go back to you, even though Josh is wearing the Indiana Jones hat. It is it is fair within sequencing to go to you. So I, I'll go to you, maybe. Oh, thank you, sir. Um, man, so a huge takeaway, golden nugget, um, especially as a small business. I think it's a different ball game when when you have a lot of people working for you or with you. But as basically running running my own company by myself, I think the idea of are you chasing field mice or gazelles? Um, and this was something you know we went over uh, during the the course. And basically, what that means is that are you going after work, smaller work, smaller jobs versus larger jobs? And of course, like inherently, yeah, you would think you would go for the larger jobs, but um, you sometimes don't, you actually find yourself taking on smaller jobs. And what, what I didn't really understand at the time is that the level of, of time commitment to facilitate a smaller job, kind of the bandwidth it takes, email communication, client communication, all that kind of things, um, 
really becomes very similar when you really kind of analyze the difference between a you know a smaller paying job versus a larger paying job especially um, in the design build realm so that was a big concept uh, that that I'm still to this day kind of learning how to um, understanding how to to get towards those larger jobs um, so that's one little uh, golden nugget there and I think I want to return back to the idea of the, the point of view marketing um, I can't stress that um, enough is that really let yourself be who you are um, especially when you're this kind of smaller we're all kind of Rachel Josh we're, all, we're, we're small companies so um, we're doing this because uh, we love it um, and then we also have a technical aptitude probably with a lot of things that we're doing. So that kind of just comes out um, in our nature. And I think understanding how to, to communicate that as a company um, was something I think I was kind of playing um, the safe game with um, and that never really running a business before. So, uh, you know, going through that, that aspect of, of understanding who, who you are truly and then how you want that to manifest in your company uh, huge, huge thing for me. Um, so yeah, those, those are some, some nuggets, some golden, golden nuggets to swipe there before the, the boulder runs you over. <laughs> John, you, you took my metaphor. I, I'm pleased as punch. I can't tell you. <laughs> Thanks so much, John. I really, I really appreciate those. Uh, Rachel, what, what are some of the things that you've taken away at this point that uh, is still resonating with you and, and you'd like folks to know about to potentially help themselves? So, so again, the, the biggest one is really about like, how can this be easy? And especially in running a mostly vegetable farm um, where people, and, and so how can this be easy to me? It's, you know, I want to work hard. I want to think hard, um, but I want, I want work-life balance and I want, to not always be working and I want time for lots of other things in my life that I also love. Um, and so often farmers just like work all the time. Um, and so really bringing, how can I make this easy? How can I not work all the time? How can I run a profitable farming operation um, without, and still have a life? Um, and I feel like that's, that's, um, yeah, what I continued to to bring to bring, and and in in that like the the CSA and and having like big CSA boxes and people and requiring people to sign up for the whole season and and that various ways that that I that I am making it easier for myself in, in the design of my farm um, and who I'm marketing to, um, and and. And another one is is thinking about what are the problems that I want to solve, and somehow even even as as I really do see the consulting and design work hopefully growing over time, it also has like brought me back to to actually like wanting to run my own farm because one of the biggest problems I want to solve is is how to how to farm profitably, and I feel like I need to like continue to figure that out for myself before I can completely confidently guide other people in that, in that process. But like, that's, that really feels like a guiding um, question in finding the work. What, what are the problems that I want to solve? Mm, brilliant. Brilliant, Rachel. Thank you so much for that. I, I think, uh, I think that's a question that is, is a perennial question because the, as the world changes around us, as we change, as uh, sometimes our location changes or the people change around us, sometimes that, that question of what are the problems I really love to solve can change as well. And I appreciate you being open to that and being receptive and being aware, like, no, it is, it is feeding people. And I'd like to get back to that. So um, brilliant. Again, I need to be closer so you can feed me because I eat a lot of food. It's just something that happens. <laughs> Thanks so much, Rachel. Um, Indiana with the hat. Well, actually, you know, it's funny. It's not Indiana because as we know from the movies, his name was junior. So, but we, we, the dog's name was Junior. No, the dog's name was Indiana. Anyways, Josh, uh, golden idols, uh, golden statues. What, what, what are some of the pieces that you're, you're, you're still like, yeah, I want to give this away. I want people to know about this and, and, and do better with them, with their work and with what, what they're doing. Mm -hmm. I want to offer the reflection that you and Rob offered to us 
in that our time is valuable. Our time is very, very valuable. And that it is, it's a lack of, I'm not going to say a lack. There's a huge opportunity to fully value our time and who we are and the gifts that we have to offer. And that by subsidizing and trying to be a fit for everyone, it, it just wears us down. And that, you know, it's, it's just not worth it. And in fact, it hinders our capacity to help people. It hinders our capacity to really, really help people when we're subsidizing our time. So that was a huge one and a lesson that I've continually learned, you know, over and over again and hope to put to rest. But, you know, just knowing that it's all about a good fit. And if it's a good fit, people who are in a good fit, there's reciprocity involved with that. And that it's just, there's, there's, there's nothing good that comes from devaluing our time, our personal time. So that's one. Um, the other major one was, and this, it almost seemed like it was just a strategy within the good fit call to say, okay, you know, like we, we offer a guarantee and that's a, that's a compelling statement. But once that statement has been made, you actually have to offer the guarantee. So by having that as a notion within our sales pitch, and then actually standing behind that and that is extremely powerful. That was an immediate level up to our process. And it made us realize that, you know, we, we actually need to charge enough money so that we can take enough time so that we are so thorough that we really can guarantee all the work that we do. So I would offer that to, you know, to everyone here who's listening to really think what it would take to be able to guarantee your services. That was huge. That was an, a, a complete game changer. And with that, you know, working with the wrong person, it's, it's very difficult to offer a guarantee to someone who's not a good fit. It's not going to work out well. So, you know, not pitching and valuing ourselves. And then the best way to differentiate ourselves is just by being ourselves and just being completely at peace with the fact that, Hey, I'm not a good, I'm not the right fit for everyone. And that's actually okay because I would much rather not work with someone and work with the right people because working with the right people is just a breeze and an absolute pleasure. And it's a pleasure for everyone involved. So, you know, trying to, trying to make it work with everyone, it it actually hurts people in the end. And, uh, you know, and I would just offer that to everyone, you know, be yourselves, value your time and do what it takes to offer a guarantee. Uh, I, is it odd to say amen during a webinar? <laughs> I feel like it might be a bit odd. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's really interesting for me to be in this position a year later to hear the three of you speak from your core, from your essence and be speaking in with the same vehemency that Rob and I were speaking during the podcast through the infographics, through the open season calls where we took your problems and really thought about them and to hear it reflected back. It's, it's, it's really compelling to me to know that the work that we put out has come back to us. And I think that's a wonderful indicator. It's a great indicator of success that it's been worthwhile for Rob and I to invest in this program and then to, to put the time and energy. Cause as everybody knows, especially with education, it's, it's really hard to get all that time back because you spent all that time developing and offering and thinking and fretting and debrief and pre-briefs and all the rest of it. But uh, I, I, it was worth it as of this moment because of what the three of you just told me. So, you know, thank you so much for your time. I, uh, I really appreciated everything you said. And um, yeah, I just, I really want to thank you for your time. We've, we've got two questions um, at least from the zoom side. So I think what I'll do is I'll run over what the regenerative business mentorship program is about. And then one of the questions is directly to you three. So if you guys are, are cool to stay on for maybe another two or three minutes. Uh, it'd be great to put that question back to you and then, uh, then we'll wrap it up. So for everybody out there in, in internet land, um, the regenerative business mentorship program has two levels, level one, which is principles one through six, level two, which is principles seven through 12. And we are offering a level one principles one through six, starting on October 17th. 
going through to February uh, of 2019. Now, it's only 13 weeks of programming, which means we're taking a, a very generous, a very needed break off during the holiday season, during reflection time, during um, the change of, of, of the calendar. So it's, it's really great in that this particular way we're offering this time is that we've got a little bit of time for folks to contemplate and think and come back. Uh, how it works is uh, on, on the first weeks, we've got a podcast that goes out about a principle. So you get the podcast, you listen to it at your leisure. It's about 20 minutes. Then you ask us any question about that podcast, how you feel it pertains to your business, how it doesn't. Um, the crunchy bits when you're thinking like that doesn't apply to me. What do you mean subsidize my time? That's, that's not true. And Rob and I think about it. We think about it for, for a couple of days and we come to the, uh, a live Zoom call where we address your problems directly. We've thought about them, we've written our answers and we've added to them. Rob and I talk about them and then we have a nice group discussion. It's, it's really quite um, incredible. Then uh, that next week, so now we're into the following week, we have what's called an open season Q&A, which means any question under the sun, how do I do my taxes? Uh, how does your guys' contracts look like? Um, what uh, type of deodorant do you wear when you're pitching a really big job? And then we say, we don't pitch. Uh, we're just looking for good fit. And um, if, if I smell like I smell, and I smell amazing. Uh, any question under the sun, we talk about that. So uh, we've had some really great questions and it's, it's forced me and Rob to really uh, come be very vulnerable to share a lot of our failures, a lot of our frustrations and be honest with folks and which has had a lot of reciprocity with everybody because as we're doing this, we've got a, a accountability partner paired up within the program. So as we're being vulnerable with you, you're being vulnerable with us, you're being vulnerable one-on-one -on -one with another accountability partner. And as John wrote for, for the Zoom call, his account accountability partner, him, he and the accountability partner are still meeting now, you know, almost a year later. So these are some relationships that form, they form very deeply. That pattern of podcast, Q&A about the podcast, open Q&A repeats. And so now we have another podcast, another podcast, Q&A, open season, and on and on it goes. You get a work booklet of infographics, really easy to understand that support all of the podcast principles. So you can take that principle, you can think about it, you can understand it, you can take a look at it from a different conversation. And there's a couple of prompt questions. Have you thought about profitability? Where are you profitable in your business? Where aren't you profitable? Why? So that way you're primed to come to the conversations we have. Um, as we go through this, sometimes we do some workshopping. So we workshop uh, niche statements or we workshop as uh, Josh and Edible, uh, Edible Landscapes Design put out uh, you know we're thinking about offering something publicly uh rob and i came up with an entire commercial because we're very dedicated to our students in this process and we want our students to get as much value as they can because we want our students to be as incredible as they can and 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 to catch the wave that is already here so that's the program that's coming up October 17th. If you're interested in it, if you want to take a look at it, if you want to have an in-depth call with Rob and I, an intake call to really understand if you are a good fit, feel free to go to vergepermaculture.ca forward slash RBM where you can see all the information. You can drop us a line and, and talk to us or you can take a look at some other testimonials from past RBM students. Rob, uh, anything else that you wanted to add about the program? No, I think you nailed most of it there, Javin. Um, you know, we just love working with folks that uh, are trying to make the world a better place. And uh, there's just an incredible opportunity right now. And, and Javin kind of hinted on the, you know, the analogy about uh, surfing. And, um, you know, it's pretty tough to pick up a newspaper or open a social media channel these days and not see the tsunami heading towards us. And uh, it's, it's sometimes it's scary, but... Um, uh, you know, but, but we're all about turning problems into solutions and that's what this is really all about. And if we're, I, I had this insight, uh, you know, early in my career that if they were going to pay me as an oil and gas engineer to develop oil and gas, which we all still depend on, um, then why shouldn't people that are making the world a better place, uh, you know, be, uh, valued just as much. And the reality that I came to was that the world does value those people. Um, the problem is not whether the world values you or not. It's how you, um, how you come to the table essentially. And so a lot of the, uh, 
challenges that small businesses face within this space is that we come with an idea, we come with passion and come with our heart on the table. And sometimes we forget to represent um, our businesses as well. And so you really can make a difference and make a living all at once. Um, you just have to get a few little things tweaked and right. And, uh, and all those systems and processes start coming together. Um, and uh, yeah, we just love running this program and seeing progress like we heard about tonight. So thanks, Josh. Thanks, Rachel. Thanks, John. Uh, really great to hear how you guys have used these principles. And, um, and, and please, let's stay in touch. I want to continue to hear how they continue to have an impact on your businesses as well. Thanks so much, Rob. Uh, so we've got two questions, one that's for everybody. So we'll start with that. And then if our panelists have to, uh, have to go, uh, then you're more than welcome to. And then we've got a, a direct question to Rob and I. So Kaylin McKay asks, what are the panelists still struggling with in their businesses? What have been the hardest nuts to crack after RBM? And the reason why we, I'm, I'm totally thrilled with this question is that it, this is not about you've taken the program and you're a superstar. Uh, nothing in life is like that. And Derek Sivers, who wrote Anything You Want, has a wonderful quote, if information was all we need, we would all have six pack abs and be millionaires or billionaires. You know, information is not all we need. Uh, change is 10% awareness. That makes you eligible to learn the tools, the techniques, the processes, the principles, the strategies, which is 40%. And then are actually more like 30%, so that's 40% total. And then the other 60% is integration. It's starting to apply that to your life to understand how that works, to understand what's going on. So I love that you asked this, Kellen. It's a very honest, a very true question. And uh, I'm really interested to hear uh, what, uh, what folks uh, are feeling. You're not all obligated to answer this question. If you don't want to answer, not a problem, but just throw your hand up and uh, we'll go to you if you're, if you're keen to answer the question of, John, I see your hand, so I'll unmute you and I'll ask the question again. What are the panelists still struggling with in their businesses and what have been the hardest nuts to crack after RBM? Go for it, John. Sure, so um, something that definitely still struggle with is managing the surges of, of working in such a seasonal field. So classically springtime, just getting really swamped with work, and then, you know, wintertime, it's definitely a lot slower. So still learning how to capture that work and set expectations. So to kind of smooth out the, uh, the stress levels throughout the year, I think is something that I'm still working with. Um, and then along with that, um, learning how to figure out what I'm really good at and then what I should just hire out um, and not try to hold on to everything, um, you know, like bookkeeping and different aspects of the company. Um, I'm kind of um, slowly but surely learning how to, to make that happen. So those are works in progress for sure. Thanks, John. I, I really appreciate that. Uh, Josh or Rachel, either of you? Yeah, Rachel, fantastic. So with the design work, um, which has been somewhat on hold since the spring, I haven't put any energy into, into getting design work. I haven't, nothing's come along. Um, I think I, I've struggled with the fact that, that I'm not really interested in installing the landscapes. I, or, or, and I don't really feel, I mean, me out there, I don't have a crew, me out there by myself, like it would take hours. I don't feel like that is my highest value offering. Um, but I, I feel like when people hire someone to make a design, they, they you know, that it's like just doing the design and then not actually having, I, I tried working with two different people to get designs installed that I did in, in, the, uh, in the spring and neither one felt like 100% like a, a perfect match. So, that, so that's one area is like, I wanna do the designs, but I don't wanna install it. And it feels like so much of the value of the design is in having it like properly, properly installed. So I think that's something I'm, I'm struggling with still like what feels right to, to charge and having having that next having someone to work with to install them or how to be involved in that process um, and also I guess something very very recent just like the last couple of weeks for me have been have, I've felt pretty overworked actually I felt uh, last week was kind of like a, a peak tomatoes kind of came to their peak the last two weeks and um, more than any other vegetables tomatoes 
I mean, you know, zucchini and cucumbers get too big, but tomatoes, like when they get over, right, they just become a mess and, and they have, yeah, they, they, there's just more, it, it, they just really peak in this way that um, combined with everything else felt, felt like it, it pushed me beyond my capacity. Um, so I think there is in work where you're working with the land, um, there really is seasonal shifts and, and managing, managing that um, right now feels like a, ch a challenge that I've been dealing with. Hmm. Thanks for that, Rachel. Uh, I feel like we're right back in open season and I want to like go directly into that and start talking to you about it. Uh, it's amazing how once we're back on in the box, uh, it just brings all that up. And uh, yeah, I, I love that how honest you are with that. I, I, I dealt with that a lot when I was starting off as well because I didn't have a big crew and finding the right people it takes a long time. Um, and it also takes a lot of awareness to know what it is you really want to do and how it is you want to execute and, and are you a project manager and how does that play out? So I appreciate that. I appreciate that a lot, both, both in the struggle, but also in the awareness. That's fantastic. Uh, Josh, did you want to weigh in? Totally. You don't need to, but you're, you're welcome to. Okay. Yeah, I would say, um, you know, similar, similar issues have come up, uh, uh, both with, with Rachel and John there. And, um, you know, due to the, the seasonal nature, it's, you know, it, when it rains, it pours and all the works just starts piling in at the same time. So managing expectations, uh, is, is, uh, is a challenge. And I guess, you know, sometimes being willing to, to tell people what they don't want to hear, you know, actually, this is going to, you know, it's going to be a couple months before I can get to your garden and that's just how it is. So, you know, I, I have a tendency to, to want to make people happy and some, and just realizing that with the, with the growth that I, I can't keep everyone happy at the same time, you know, I need to prioritize and, you know, manage expectations. That's a big one. And, and then also, you know, with, within the business, making sure that the business isn't, too reliant upon any one individual because that could change and when that does change and if it does change it can it can be quite a challenge you know there's there's uh, three business owners and we each kind of have our own niche within the business uh, but for a variety of reasons you know two of my other business partners have had to step back to do other things this year and and that's been a big uh, wake up call and you know and how much I value them but also how how dependent I've been on them in the past so you know having having backups and backups and backups you know in case say this subcontractor is busy this month okay who's my next person and you know making sure that there's redundancy built into the system so that you know if, if one person has to leave or if this thing doesn't work out that there's backup plans so you know I, I would say one of the things I've challenged struggled with is you know anticipating those things and you know seeing how that you know just anticipating the problems that I, I don't know exist so you know that's a, a difficult one because if I don't know what I don't know that's a, a, tr a tricky one so um, and also knowing the right questions to ask and who to ask for help because I've realized that so much of these problems can be mitigated if I just know the right question to ask and I know who to ask it of and people are more than willing to help. So I would say that asking for help has been, that's, that's been an ongoing issue and uh, yeah. And something I, I still am, am working through now. Mm -hmm. Thanks so much, Josh. I, I appreciate hearing that on, on the other side of my business of life design and working with limiting beliefs. I hear that a lot from business owners is dealing with wanting to please and wanting to, to say absolutely yes. And even with all the good fit and the understanding and all the rest of it and valuing time, there is still that impulse. And so I appreciate you bringing that up. Um, guys, uh, I just so very happy, Rachel, Josh, John, folks, thank you so much for spending your time this evening. I know uh, you guys are very busy and I really appreciate you taking the time to talk about uh, the regenerative business mentorship program and to talk about your businesses. Uh, thank you so much for your time and for your conversation. I, I wish you guys the very best as fall turns into winter and hopefully the tomatoes slow down and there's time for reflection. There's, there's time to come back into uh, self-care as well. So 
thank you very much for your time, folks. If, if you guys have to leave, no worries at all. I'll unmute you guys and give you a chance to say goodbye and tell people um, your, your business uh, websites and all that good stuff. We've got one more question, so I'll let you guys say goodbye and then um, and tell people your, your businesses. And then we've got one more question from, from Tim. We'll finish up. And just before we uh, hit that question for, from Tim, I just wanted to say, um, if you guys want to get access to this video again, it's been recorded on YouTube, so you can watch it again and listen to the answers. Um, if you're looking for any information on regenerative business mentorship, the link is in the show notes below. And uh, if you have any questions for Javin or I, you can schedule one-on-one uh, -on -one calls. We'd happily talk to you uh, with a good fit call, um, 20 minutes to see if you're a fit. The program is completely guaranteed. So if you don't get value out of it, then you get your money back. Um, and so we practice what we preach. It's really important to us. We're not interested in uh, necessarily taking in people that we can't help. We really want to help other people to level up. And so we're very selective about, um, you know, who, who is going to get value from this program essentially. So again, uh, check the show notes below for the link. If you want more information, it's all there on the webpage. Um, you can find information on how to get in touch with Javin and myself. And if you guys found this video useful, hit the like button and we'll see you guys in the next video. Awesome. Uh, Josh, John, and Rachel, feel free to, to jump in and uh, say your farewells and let people know how they can get in touch with you. Thank you guys. This was fun to be a part of. I just uh, posted my website. It's littlemoonfarmnapa.com. Awesome. Thanks, Rachel. Um, yeah, thank you for the honor of speaking on here. Okay. Bye. Right, thanks so much for being here. <laughs> All right. Uh, thanks, everyone. Uh, it's been a huge pleasure, and thanks, Rob and, and Javin, again. And, uh, and to everyone out there, whether it's in this program or not, do yourselves a favor and invest in yourselves, and the people you love will benefit from it. So that's my message. And uh, our website is www.edible.design. And I'll put that down in the, in the notes here as well. Thanks, everyone. Thanks so much, Josh. All right. Well, uh, it was a pleasure to be with everyone tonight and really uh, an honor as well. Um, I put a link to my website there. And if anybody, any of the uh, attendees tonight want to reach out to me with any questions about what it was like being in the class, I'd be happy to chat. So, um, really got a ton out of it and I think that's why we're all here tonight to, to kind of communicate that so um, yeah looking looking forward to hearing from some folks and, and have a great night everyone thanks so much John and for people who are looking for John's website it's our O-U-R uh, landorganics.org so for folks that are just watching want to write that down uh, there you go uh, last question we have here uh, Tim Peel Wickstrom uh, Javin and Rob, is the regenerative business mentorship a fit for what I do with the blacksmithing agro permaculture tools made from reclaimed materials using sustainable, sustainable methods? I definitely want to help to improve both sales and my business process, and I've been keeping an eye on this mentorship you and Javin offer. I thought that was you, Tim, with the binoculars over in the distance, so thanks. Now I know who it is. Um, basically, I'm going to kind of go I'm going to patterns to patterns to details here, Tim. Uh, I'm sure you're primed for this, but at the, at the highest level, if you are in a, in a service business, if you're in a consulting business, if you're trying to solve somebody's problem, I think this program is very much applicable to you. Uh, if you're trying to learn how to be a better uh, salesperson, if you're trying to be able to, to find better uh, connectivity, if you're trying to find a better fit, if you're trying to understand your value, I think that's a big one. Uh, something I took away from a lot of the, the conversations I've had individually with RBM members and participants post the programs is that they finally learned how to communicate what they do. And Tim, knowing your business and talking to you about it over the last couple of years, taking reclaimed materials, turning it into heirloom, buy it once, farming, gardening, permaculture tools and implements. Um, there's a huge amount of value there. And something about value is that we tend to leave it on the table because we don't internally want to toot our own horns, so to speak. And I think there's a lot to be gained from the community of entrepreneurs around us um, to, to, to communicate, to have other people to hear what it is you do and reflect it back. I think there's a lot of value there. I think business process is something that 
I continually day by day, month by month, year by year, improve upon, learn upon. So uh, again, I think there would be a lot of value in that. And I think Rob said it best. We practice what we preach. We guarantee that you'll, you'll take value out of this program. And if you don't, your money's coming back to you. So uh, again, it's, it's a low risk conversation in terms of that. Uh, so I think on, on those levels, I would say that you would get a, a value out of the program. I think you get value about the interactivity with the group. I think you get value out of an accountability partner. I think the principles, especially for folks that haven't been steeped in business, but are very creative. And I would put you in the creative field, knowing as I know you within illustration and computers and, and with now blacksmithing, I think taking that creative and putting it into principles and processes are some of the best ways for creatives to be very profitable and productive into the future. Rob, anything you'd like to add there? Yeah, I think that, uh, no, actually, Javin, I think you nailed it all on the head there. So t Tim, I think you'd, you'd get a ton of value out of the program. And like Javin said, it's guaranteed. So there's little to no risk there for you. Um, having, um, you know, one of the other kind of advantages is, is that you're rubbing shoulders with, um, people that are potentially going to be your clients and uh, your biggest fans as well. So being part of the RBM um, kind of alumni, uh, all these people that, that we, I mean, the people we just spoke with, but all of the other students as well, um, they're the, they're your hubs essentially. And you can get access to them without the program, but um, having really close relationships with other people that are in a similar field is always valuable um, in terms of creating a cross connection not just within Alberta or Lethbridge um, or Calgary, but right across the globe. Thanks, Rob. Yeah, that, great, great points there. And Tim, thanks so much for your question. Uh, thanks again for everybody who was listening. Um, although I have definitely had the lion's share of the screen time, this is an incredible 50-50 collaboration with myself, Rob Avis, as well as his wife, Michelle Avis. And I'm just so pleased to be working with Rob again. It's such a pleasure to pair our our, our minds and our inspiration and our foibles and all the rest of it together and to really bring uh, as much as we can to every single session with the students. So uh, Rob, thanks so much for giving me the stage so much this evening. I really appreciate that. Rob's been working behind the scenes and making sure that uh, YouTube has been monitored and all the rest of it. But uh, uh, my big, I'm going to end this by saying thank you to everybody, but huge thanks to Rob Avis and just the light you continue to bring to uh, regenerative agriculture to regenerative design to living a better life, man. You inspire me. Right back at you. And you're probably thinking about uh, the light is the stuff on my forehead that keeps reflecting <laughs> back into the camera there. But uh, no, it's been a really great job. And I'm really stoked to be doing this with you guys again, uh, with you again on the next session. It's going to be incredible. And uh, yeah, hope you guys, uh, if you have any questions, get in touch with us. We would love to see you in the program. So thanks so much. Talk to you guys soon. Thank you.